Hi there, Adam Gower here, and welcome to this special episode of the Real Estate Crowdfunding Show, Syndication in the Digital Age at GowerCrowd.com, where you are going to hear from one of the most influential thought leaders in digital marketing in the world today, Guy Kawasaki. Guy is Chief Evangelist of Canva, which is an online graphic design tool we use here at Gower Crowd. So a big shout out to Bart on my team for suggesting I contact Guy for the show. Thank you, Bart. Guy has almost a half million followers on Facebook and Pinterest, almost one and a half million on Twitter and over three million followers on LinkedIn. Guy started his career at Apple in the early 1980s, and I'm afraid I can actually remember those days. It was a time when I had what was called a Macintosh, and I could never figure out if I'd actually bought an Apple Macintosh, a Macintosh, or an Apple. (laughs) Anyway, it was at that time that Guy was evangelizing the company, and you'll hear today, in today's episode, what this means exactly, and how you can apply it to your work on a day-to-day basis. Guy has started up his own podcast called Guy Kawasaki's Remarkable People Podcast, and it has already hit the Apple Podcast's new and noteworthy list. Incredible. You can find out more about this and about Guy at the podcast page for today's episode at GowerCrowd.com. Here's what you're going to learn from Guy today. What a brand evangelist is and how you can apply that to your own online efforts. As we've been seeing in just the last few years with real estate crowdfunding, everyone talks about it democratizing the industry. What does that mean exactly? Well, we'll hear about that today. And that while it's impossible to predict how digital media is going to evolve, of course, you're going to learn what you have to do instead. Right? We can't predict, but here's what to do instead. And you'll hear Guy talk about that in today's episode. Now, be sure to check out the show notes for today's episode at GowerCrowd.com, where you can watch some video highlights from my conversation with Guy and where you'll learn how to build a cutting-edge digital marketing system for yourself so you can raise money for your projects online. Just sign up for the whiteboard workshop at the show notes page for today's episode at GowerCrowd.com, where I walk you through the whole system. You'll find a link to that right there on the podcast page. All right, now you are in for a treat as I introduce you to my very special guest, host of Guy Kawasaki's Remarkable People podcast, the man himself, Mr. Guy Kawasaki. Guy, thank you so much for being on my podcast. It's a real, a real pleasure. I've been looking forward to it ever since we first connected. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. My great pleasure. So I'll tell you what, let's kick off if you don't mind. Yeah. I'd love to know a little bit about your background and, oh. uh, and, and how particularly it was that you um, migrated or discovered the digital realm. I know it's a long time ago, but <laughs> tell me about that pathway briefly and then we'll look at the future a little bit where you think we're headed. Sure. So I started working for Apple in 1983, and that was before the internet. Uh, Oh my God, those were the days, you know, it was fax machines, if you're lucky. Uh, A little while later, there was this, you know, huge Motorola brick cell phone. I mean, those were the days. So I was a software evangelist for the Macintosh division. My job was to convince people to write Mac software and create Mac hardware. And then I became, uh, I, I left Apple to start a software company. I re- became a writer and a speaker. I returned to Apple as an Apple fellow uh, and chief evangelist. I did that for a couple years. I left again to start another company. And today I'm chief evangelist of Canva, which is an online graphic design service. And I'm also Mercedes-Benz brand ambassador. So uh, basically I fell in love with Macintosh after falling in love with an Apple II. My college roommate hired me into Apple. Uh, I'm living proof of the, the effectiveness of nepotism. <laughs> and here I am. Here I am. So what is an evangelist? I've seen this. Sure. Uh, what do you do to evangelize? So evangelism comes from a Greek word meaning bringing the good news. So what an evangelist does is bring the good news. I brought the good news of Macintosh, how Macintosh would make people more creative and productive. And I'm now bringing the good news of Canva, how Canva has democratized design. So what an evangelist does is not just think about himself or herself or his company or her company, but the other person. So when I evangelized Macintosh, I truly did believe that it was 
the best computer for the other person to be more productive and creative. And today when I evangelize Canva, I truly do believe that you, know, you can make the best graphics faster, cheaper, and easier than any other way. So it's not just about your bottom line, it's the other person's goodwill and benefits and you know, improvement and all the good stuff. So uh, before I ask actually what's involved on a day-to-day -day basis with evangelizing, let me just tell you a flashback. Yeah. The first computer that I had was a Macintosh SE20. Oh, yeah? And I'm pretty sure that had a 20 megabyte hard drive. Right? <laughs> That's what it had. What, what did you do with all that storage? There was that. I tell you, what, it was unbelievable. I was able to get faxes. Uh, I connect. I was in Japan, actually. <laughs> I, I took this thing to, with me to Japan. I accepted faxes. I set it up to automatically print. Yeah. How if I even did? There was no email, but you could do. Um, you could. Uh, you could still communicate. There was like a chat function. It split the screen in half. It was. <laughs> Those were the days. Huh? It was. Yeah. It was. I had to wind it up every morning. <laughs> <laughs> did you have to like ride a bike to generate electricity? <laughs> I had a little hamster in the back. <laughs> So, uh, so what actually, what is the job description of an evangelist? And what do you actually do? Do you give speeches? Do you write thought leadership pieces? Like what, you, what is the, what? you do whatever it takes. Uh, I, I think maybe the most important skill of an evangelist is the ability to do a demo. So, you know, if you can do a demo of a product or a service, or for that matter, a house or a commercial property, yeah, that's the key for an evangelist. I think that's the most important skill. So would you use this? Would you use the term education as well or teaching as well? well Is that the certainly evangelism involves education and teaching as opposed to browbeating and coercion. <laughs> so yes, yes, absolutely. I think an evangelist has a higher degree of respect for the other person. So you're not trying to bludgeon that person into becoming a customer. You're trying to show them that, you know, this is a Macintosh, this is Canva, uh, let me do a demo for you, and then you decide. So is it different then from sales, or how is it different, I should say? Well, I would say that sales uh, primarily has your best interest at heart, you know, your commission, your bottom line, your quota, your, you know, your, your numbers. Whereas evangelists, has the other person's best interest at heart. Now, don't get me wrong. It's good for me if you use Canva. It was good for me if you use Macintosh. So I'm not saying it's bad for the evangelist or even neutral for the evangelist, but it's not only for the evangelist. And is this something that uh, you think people, I mean, we, I've explained to you a little bit about the, the audience that we have, mm -hmm. right? This, this new or this old industry that for the first time is able to use digital media to raise capital. Yes. Do real estate developers who want to raise capital online have to evangelize, do you think, to be effective? Well, you know, I, I think there's some trickiness there because of this little thing called the Securities and Exchange Commission. And so, you know, you, you can't exactly go out and make a public offering saying, well, I was just an evangelist. I wasn't making a public offering. So, and I'm not a real estate lawyer. So that's something that, you know, it takes a different kind of expertise to decide. But the skill of evangelism about, you know, positioning a property or believing a property is good news and it's going to help the community and help the investor and help, you know, that's evangelistic. But I can't tell you that I know the, the, the legal issues about, fundraising on the internet. Right, So, but a lot of what, uh, what we talk about is thinking about, the, uh, about bringing value. When yes. one is communicating online, yes. uh, right, where the, the world of the real estate developer has traditionally been um, kind of cliched, it's been the country club, <laughs> right? That you yes. would go to the country club, yes. sit over lunch. Now, now this entire industry has moved to the online world. And, and one of the, uh, the mantras, if you like, yeah. of being effective is to bring value in the way that you communicate. Is that, yes. is yes. that something similar, you think? Well, it's, it's hard to imagine an effective evangelism effort not bringing education and information into the fold. 
uh, because evangelism does have a, I think, higher degree of respect for the buyer and for the investor. So, yeah, uh, I, I think al almost anything that's good for the other person can be evangelized. I'm not saying evangelism is the only skill that can succeed. Uh, I, I'm, I'm also, you know, to downplay it a little bit, I'm not saying it's sufficient and necessary. There are other ways but certainly it is a way. So um, let's uh, explore Canva a little yes, bit. Because yes. it's, a it's a very interesting <clears throat> tool. My, my team uses Canva all the time. Oh yeah? Uh, yes, yeah, it's a, it's a phenomenally powerful, useful tool that really facilitates everything that we do in terms of communication. But let me ask you this. Canva, and, it's, and forgive me if I don't really understand the full depth of the yeah. benefits of Canva, but as I see it, Canva is a visual media, right? You are creating something yes. visual to share in the digital realm. Yes. How do, how, what are the different, how impactful are the different kinds of communication in the digital realm, meaning video, a static image like you produced on Canva, audio or written, for example? Well, I think at this point, um, if you don't have a graphic or a video, you're just a loser. I mean, <laughs> you know, it cannot be done with pure text anymore. And so what Canva does is we have created design types, hundreds of design types. And a design type is something like a a flyer, a business card, a 16 by nine presentation, social media, the, the cover photo, uh, the album shot, the book cover, all that kind of stuff. Every possible design type of graphic we have figured out. And we give hundreds of templates for each design type. So if you're looking to make a flyer, we have created hundreds of examples. And all you do is swap in your text swap in your photos or use some of our stock photos and you would create a flyer for a property. And let me just say that, uh, I like to say that one can create a Canva graphic in the same amount of time it takes to boot Photoshop. <laughs> it's a very good rule of thumb. And I think in your business, you know, real estate, it's especially relevant. So, you know, showing property, showing, you know, this is the street, this is the view, this is the external, you know, all that stuff. This is every room. I don't know how you do it without video and graphics. Exactly right. Yeah, my team actually uses it a lot for social media. So we'll create yeah. thought leadership written articles. Yes. But at the top of those, we'll put a, a beautiful graphic that will have the headline of the yes. article and it's that that we distribute on yeah. social media. Absolutely. Absolutely. And how did Canva come about? And how did you get involved with them? Well, they saw that I was using it on Twitter, so they reached out to me. Uh, I, you know, I can't tell you that I founded the company or that I, uh, you know, it was my idea or anything. This is called Guys Golden Touch, which is a key concept in evangelism. <laughs> so Guys Golden Touch is not that everything I touch turns to gold. Guy's golden touch is whatever his gold guy touches. So the key to evangelism is find something great to evangelize. And what, what's particularly about Canva was it initially and even now that? Well, it, it's the fact that without any design skills, you can create beautiful graphics in minutes. And you know, I, that, th listen, in the month of October, Canva created 139 million graphics for people. Okay, so we create four to five million graphics a day. <laughs> That's incredible. A day. So, obviously, <laughs> you know, to use the metaphor, the dogs are eating the food, and it's a lot of dogs. <laughs> it's a lot of dogs eating a lot of food. That's very interesting. Now, there's another term we talked about ev evangelizing. Yes. There's another term that you've used quite a lot. Uh, and that is this concept. I watched The Art of Innovation, which is yeah. a really phenomenal TEDx uh, speech that you give. And I do recommend anybody that's listening, they Thank should you. check that out. We'll chat about your podcast as well before we finish. Okay. Uh, but in The Art of uh, Innovation and in other places, you've talked about the concept of democratizing an industry. Yes. And that is a term that is also 
somewhat loosely used in real estate capital formation yes. as well. So tell me what's your idea? What does that actually mean? Well, uh, just as the Macintosh democratized computing, because back then in the mid 80s, you, know, you, you had, to, well, to go back to the very beginning of Apple in the mid 70s, you had to work for Hewlett Packard or go to Stanford or work for NASA or something like that to use a computer. You didn't have computers in your house, much less in your bag. And so what, <laughs> what Apple did is it democratized computing. So now two guys in a garage made it so that anybody could buy a personal computer. So fast forward to Canva, it used to be that many people would have to submit a request to the graphic design department, wait around till they got around to it, et cetera, et cetera or they had to buy very expensive software and spend weeks and weeks learning it. That's not true anymore. Now you go to Canva, you open up an account, you pick the design type, you pick a template, and I swear in five minutes you could create your first Canva graphic. So that's what democracy means to me, that you know, it's leveled the playing field, it's removed the barriers, particularly cost and learning. Right, and it's, the, <clears throat> it's also the empowerment of Yes. individuals to do yes. something that yesterday was out of their reach, right? Yes, yes. It, uh, it's just like political democracy. I mean, you know, it's about self-determination and self-rule. Interesting. It's even more powerful though, isn't it? Because you really can change your own <laughs> life very directly. Well, you, yes, we hope. <laughs> well, in politics, it's harder because you, 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 your yeah. one vote you know, it becomes part of a macro yes, yes. Uh, perspective. But in terms of using digital tools, certainly my experience, Guy, I mean, I'm a, you know, I'm an old, I'm an old, talk about dogs, I'm an old dog learned <laughs> some new tools in the last few years. And uh, my life has utterly changed in the last few years because of uh, a, a migration into the digital world. Right? Absolutely. You've been in this world forever, right? Yes, so I mean, yes. just as long as it's been there. So to me, democracy really does mean something different. So let me ask you this then. You've seen from the very early days of Macintosh, it's really incredible. Yes. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you, you, you confirmed that my, I kept thinking it's an SE20. It really yeah. did only have a 20 megabyte hard drive. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's that was an ocean. Unbelievable when you think about it, how much yeah. power that thing had and how far we've come. So yeah. tell me something. Today we democratize, Canva democratizes uh, artistic expression. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the change in regulations has democratized the ability for people to invest in real estate, right? Mm -hmm. Where do you think the digital world is gonna take us in the next, uh, you know, if, uh, ten, five years or even next you year. You know what, Adam? Nobody knows. And anybody who tells you they know is lying. They may be lying to you and know the truth. They may be lying to themselves, but they're lying. Uh, I don't, you know, maybe Steve Jobs knew, maybe Walt Disney knew, maybe Albert Einstein knew, maybe Thomas Edison knew. Guy Kawasaki doesn't know. So, you know, I, I, I believe that I have learned how to react fast as opposed to anticipate <laughs> because uh, there's only a handful of people in the world who can anticipate. I'm not one of them. Maybe Elon Musk is in that category also. And so you know, I, 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 I don't want people to think, oh my God, you know, I have to be a Steve Jobs or Elon Musk in order to innovate and keep up with the times. You just have to follow fast. <laughs> That's, That's good enough. Mm. Now, most people won't even follow. I mean, you know, an engineer in Kodak invented the digital camera in 1975. Uh, you, how many of you are using a Kodak digital camera today? Zero, right? So Kodak could have owned the digital camera world, but it resisted because, I mean, can you imagine that engineer going to his boss saying, I figured out a way to not have to buy film. <laughs> you know, that's like a career limiting move. <laughs> and so, you know, you, you didn't have to be that engineer. You just had to be smart enough to recognize that what he did is changing the world. You also have to be smart enough to understand what business you're in. So Kodak was not in the chemicals business. 
Kodak was and is, Polaroid was and is, all camera companies was and is in the business of preserving memories. And so if you preserve a memory with, you know, silver on paper or silver on film or a digital sensor, doesn't really matter. You're in the preservation of memories business. So, you know, get with it. This is a fascinating idea and it's something you talk about in uh, the art of innovation as well is, yeah. is the idea that you, you have to think about so please you articulate yeah. I'm going to the mantra idea yeah what is the ultimate benefit that you're bringing uh, right you talked about the ice the ice example ice, uh, ice harvesting yes. yes yeah so that's you know you have to keep in mind that you know typewriter companies were not in the typewriter business they were in the information business Kodak is in the preservation of memories business a Canva is in the communication of ideas business. Maybe it's graphics, maybe it's video, maybe it's audio, maybe it's, you know, virtual reality, but you've got to keep going. You can't say, you know, we harvest ice in the winter because there's going to be refrigerators someday. <clears throat> now you have this incredible new podcast. Yeah. Uh, that uh, is called the remarkable people. Podcast. Yes, yes. You've interviewed some truly <laughs> remarkable people. To me, it's a remarkable person interviewing remarkable people. Well, thank you. So let me thank ask you. you something about that. You've had a few episodes already. It's yes. enormously successful. It's absolutely fantastic. But now, what have you personally learned from your conversations with these remarkable people that have, have given insights to you about your life, particularly yeah, sure. your life online, if you like. Sure. Well, uh, so you're right. I have a podcast. It's called Guy Kawasaki's Remarkable People. So this is a podcast that's not about me. It's not me spouting off. If you listen to it, it's about 95% my guest and 5% me. My job is to make my guest look good and bring out his or her wisdom, not, you know, be front and center. And so, so far I've released Jane Goodall, uh, everyone knows who he, she is. And Philip Zimbardo, he's a Stanford professor who did the Stanford prison experiment. Uh, tomorrow night out comes Stephen Wolfram. He's a mathematician and physicist. The week after is Margaret Atwood. So, you know, I have guests that you may have heard of. And, and from each of them are trying to bring out their wisdom. So, you know, Jane Goodall talks about how you build trust, build, building trust with chimpanzees. I don't think it's that much different than building trust with humans. So there's a lesson of Jane Goodall. She didn't have the proper education to do what she did. She didn't even have a college degree at all when she went to Africa. Uh, with, with Phil Zimbardo, I think the major lesson is you can take perfectly good people, stick them in a bad situation, and they will become bad too. It's the situation overpowers a person's personal ethics. And you know, that's, that's why people assume the roles in the Stanford Prison Experiment. But also, you know, that can be applied today, right? So you take a, per, a good person and you stick them and make them part of ICE. Well, they're going to embrace the ICE concept. And you know, there were many, many people who I'm sure are very decent people who do indecent things when they're stuck in a war, in an army, in a situation, in a prison. And I, I think one of the important lessons is, you know, you, you can say, oh, no, I, I would never do that. I would stand up for what's right. I think one of the lessons of Phil Zimbardo is, you know, you really don't know until you're in that situation what you will do. So the, the key is don't get in the situation. <laughs> That's interesting. And, and have you integrated any of these ideas from these remarkable people into your life in any way or? Well, you, you know, I, well, I'm not going to be a prison guard anytime soon. That's for sure. Uh, every one thing I learned from Jane Goodall is to eat less red meat. Well, but I just love red meat. <laughs> <laughs> so see. I'm, you know, I really reduced my red meat actually. So you know, everybody offers something. Uh, I promise you. Guy, it's a real pleasure to talk to you. Let me, if you don't mind, let me sign off with three questions okay. that I ask all of my guests. The okay. first one, you know, again, my 
audience is primarily real estate developers who are migrating into this new wonderful world of digital media. So okay. somebody starting out okay. that is a troglodyte, right? Like I used to be when I started. Okay. What would be the most important thing that they should keep in mind? About oh, the should, the, for social media specifically? Yeah, for, for, for moving from the analog world yeah, to, the to the digital. Well, uh, I think one important thing is never ask your customers or potential customers to do something that you would not do. And this means providing a credit card number. This means going through CAPTCHA. This means filling out you know, 15 fields of information to get an account, whatever it is. If you wouldn't do it, don't ask people to do it. Uh, I also think that uh, social media is fast and free and ubiquitous. It is the best thing that ever happened to marketing. There are obviously abuses to it, but um, well, A, in one sense, we can't put that genie back in the bottle, so you might as well figure out how to use the genie. Okay? Second question. Yes. What has been the hardest lesson you've learned in your life online in the digital world? The hardest lesson? Yes. Uh, I don't. I don't know if I've had some hard lessons. I mean, I've been you know attacked by people and stuff, so that's not easy. But I don't. You know, I don't want to make myself into a hero. I haven't overcome anything like you know so traumatic online. That this is. I just work hard, Adam. I just work hard. I can outwork people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that dovetails into my uh, my last question. Guy. Yeah. And uh, what are your key daily habits then to be successful? Oh, uh, shoot. You don't want to know my habits. Uh, I have the worst habits. You know, I sleep with an iPhone or an iPad, so I'm like interrupting my sleep. I check my email and social media before I do anything else instead of doing the really crucial things I need to do that day. You could, if you watched me and knew what I did, if you just did the opposite, you'd be a much, much better user of digital technology. I'm the worst. Just... Look at what I'm doing and do the opposite. That would be my advice. <laughs> <laughs> Guy Kawasaki, you're a very humble man. Thank you so very much for being on my podcast, this special holiday edition. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, well, Mary, what is it? What, when is this coming out? December this the, uh, the day, but the, yeah, the 24th, actually. Well, Merry Christmas to everybody. And you know, between the eggnog and opening the presents and eating turkey, subscribe to my podcast remarkablepeople.com <laughs> and i'll put that in the show notes count on all right it. thank you very much thank you guy lovely see you later that was the amazing guy kawasaki host of guy kawasaki's remarkable people podcast evangelist at canva and brand ambassador for mercedes-benz be sure to check out the show notes for today's episode where you'll find links to guy and to his podcast to a series of short highlight videos excuse me, for today's show. And you can also access the whiteboard workshop there where I walk you through how to build the exact same digital marketing system that we build for clients here at Gower Crowd so you can build one yourself to raise money online for your real estate projects. That is all at gowercrowd.com on the podcast page. All right, that's it. Excuse me for having a bit of a frog in my throat. My wife says I have the man cold. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but... It doesn't diminish the intensive suffering that I have to go through. Anyway, that's my excuse for having a slightly off voice today. Thank you, however, for listening. And thank you, Guy Kawasaki. Good luck to you with your new series, Guy Kawasaki's Remarkable People Podcast. I've listened to a few episodes and they are really well worth the time. Thank you for being my guest today. It was a real pleasure having you on. That's all for this episode. I'll see you next time. And for now, this is Dr. Adam Gower. Signing off.